guys, welcome to the next video. Sorry about the shaky camera. It seems to always do that sometimes when I start videos. But today's a little bit of a giveaway because as you know, sometimes if you follow me, I do follow um, a lady on Facebook who's now doing the Body Shop Online, Body Shop or Animal Cruelty Free. But sometimes I enter raffles and things like that and I often, I often um, win things and things like that. And the last time I think I won this Body Shop Bamboo um, brush, but I have one, something that I particularly, obviously, you know, when you're in the shop, you can smell these scents when you're buying something for yourself, I mean, so you do know what you're buying and things like that, and the body shop is amazing, but this particular thing that, this particular um, shower gel that I bought, it's from the body shop Spa World, Spa of the World, um, it is Bulk and Juniper Body Wash, now, it hasn't been touched at all, um, I will wipe this down, obviously the bottle, um, the only thing that's happened is that the bottle has been opened just at the top, there's a little lid here that just pops up, and what I did is I smelled the scent, and it just wasn't for me, um, so it's brand new from the Body Shop, um, and I got it um, from the Body Shop online, um, it's invigorating bath and shower gel, um, 250 mils, would usually be £16, um, I won it in a giveaway, um, for me, the scent just wasn't what I was looking for, but that's sometimes the risk you take, and apology for the COVID hair. I actually have booked myself in, but not until the 12th of December. Fingers crossed we actually get everything open again. Otherwise, I think I'll be going for one of those Garnier blonde things, but for me, it's never been um, a strength of mine. I've never wanted to mess with my hair. You know, I've never done a bottle kind of um, colour as such, but getting back to the giveaway, so I will pop a picture of it um, somewhere up here, so it's the Balkan Juniper Body Wash, um, and for me the scent just wasn't really what I wanted, um, you can look up Balkan Juniper, it has quite <clears throat> a, a strong, almost menthol, not completely menthol, but there's definitely a, a scent or a wave of mint, um, and for me it just wouldn't be what I'd be looking for, so if anybody at all would like it, just give me an email, the first person that emails me, I'll just give it away, um, you, my um, email is down below, for the, for, um, so it's not a competition as such, I'm just giving it away. Um, so again, the first person to email me in my Gmail, which it is down below, the actual email address itself, I will um, just send it off to you. There's another thing that I have from Superdrug that I haven't been using, and um, it hasn't been opened at all. Um, I had got skincare, but then um, I'd chosen the new vitamin C um, range. So this hasn't been opened at all, and it's something that I don't need. And it is the Vitamin E Skincare Dual Phase Cleansing Oil. So you have, you can see there at the back, you've got the water and the oil. Um, and I think what you do is you shake it up and use a cotton pad and wipe it all over your face. So it is a cleanser, but it's the dual phase. And again, person to, to email me for that too, or for both, um, or individually, um, I will send them off to you. And don't forget to give me your address and postcode. If you're obviously in another country, don't forget to give me all of those details as well. So it will be the um, Body Shop Spa of the World, Balkan Juniper Body Wash, and then we have the Vitamin E range from Superdrug, and it's their oil and water dual phase cleanser. So that's that. Um, the rest was just really a catch up. Um, <clears throat> today I wanted to talk about um, more of an emotions really and a chit chat um, and things that you would, um, you're only really starting, well I'm only really starting to realise now. Again I have been asked about Juice Plus so I'll just first of all just pop in these um, vitamins, these are the ones I've been asked about. Um, I think it was Claire so do give me an email Claire but we're doing budget friendly, um, budget friendly kind of um, options now because I think you know coming to Christmas we've got a bridal package we have the beauty care package and um, and we have and um, the winter warmer and um, including the children's vitamins that are completely free so the winter warmer are the vegetables the berries and um, the the um, fruits um, and the omegas all in one and it's called the winter warmer so basically it has every vitamin you'll need especially now there's a lot of vitamin d um in the in these both of them have vitamin d as well as the, the berry omega is so important um, and these are age friendly so any age can take juice plus so this is it i will link below there is a winter warmer package and it's budget friendly so there's monthly options i think there's four monthly options of 22 as far as i know i will link below and um, everything that you need if you'd like the winter warmer package do let me know um so that is um or these on their own they all come individually to you if you would like a bridal package basically what that entails is the vanilla shakes um taking them twice a day i would never recommend taking them um to kind of fill every meal once or twice a day obviously eating healthy meals in between and um, eight glasses of water a day and um, fresh air exercise and then um 
obviously what I'm thinking now is obviously we're only allowed to go so far in terms of the lockdown, the second lockdown. So inside exercise, Pilates, things like that to strengthen your core or even if you're just trying to drop a dress size for your wedding dress and um, things like that. But um, the bridal package would also um, include the vanilla shakes and the berry capsules, if you remember, because they are skin, hair and nails. So there's a huge amount there that you could. Um, so please let me know if you're interested in packages. Um, anything like that if you're just interested in the chill anything that you buy if you have children the children's vitamins come free so yes if you would like to know any more do let me know in the comments or just email me it's um, kiraog.avon at gmail.com okay I'll leave all those things below so again just to remind you about the um, the body shop and the um, vitamin E skin range um, I have the dual face cleansing oil and the body shop ball congenium per body wash do look at those ingredients guys and see the description and see if you would like that scent um, because that's something that I um, I saw it and I just thought my goodness um, when she was describing it it is really soft and luxurious I tested a small amount just on my skin here the scent is what hit me first um, so yes I would bulk and juniper do look up that scent and then let me know um, through email if you'd like it okay so I was asked to kind of, um, when I did my mental health, and I will link below, I was requested to talk about um, when I moved to <clears throat> um, for, to England from Ireland um, and my story and my history behind that. And that's something that I've never done actually on YouTube. So I want, they asked me just to kind of, um, again, I think it was um, Christine. I have your name, surnames here, but um, obviously I'm very aware of surnames and things like that. So um privacy and things like that so it was requested basically my journey here and how I got from um, Ireland to England and the reasons and I think that really comes into um, a lot about relationships and um, kind of just what was happening in Ireland at the time sorry guys I have to finish this shake um, because I have a lot to do today and I didn't have a chance to um, have dinner or breakfast even I'm sorry I'm so sorry guys you've never seen me eat on on um on video before although i know that's really popular i've seen a lot of people test food out and stuff online but um <clears throat> yes so my story begins in 2010 i went to visit a friend um with my mum for three days so it was, i think it was a bank holiday weekend so we went the friday saturday and sunday and we had the monday off to recover so i went to visit a friend and she lived in somerset and while i was there she had a roommate um and we hit it off um really quickly it was really odd um and so we kind of emailed back and forth i went on another weekend by myself um and we really hit it off together and um it was getting serious quite quickly and i tended to really um at work um the kind of the crash of 2009 had just happened so i was working in an investment bank um i won't name names or anything like that and they'd had to unfortunately let everybody go so I was kind of thinking like you know I'm gonna to have to probably I'd had my teaching diploma at that time but I'd never actually taught um and I was looking and in Ireland there was just no jobs there wasn't temporary work the it kind of recession of 2009 happened and I'd had just visited him in the summer so as things were going on getting back into September I was kind of think he had an idea why don't you apply for jobs here so after about three months of knowing each other we did actually move in together which I know looking back now I was so young I was very naive and um, so 2009 I would have been 20 god guys now that's showing <laughs> so okay would have been 24 so I went over um and it was 25 sorry guys and 24 my god guys you can tell I haven't had coffee so I went over and we um we moved in really really quickly we stayed um in my friend's house obviously because that's where I'd met him as a roommate um and then we moved out ourselves and um that's a really bad thing guys and what I would advise is never move in with somebody so quickly because suddenly you're paying the bills together you're you're making sure that you guys relationship isn't suffering because you're seeing each other constantly and that can be a bad thing too not so much a bad thing if you've been with somebody for a long time um but when you haven't been with somebody for a long time and it's gone from this weekend world whirlwind romance to staying together constantly it got very stressful very quickly um, and we realized our personalities were completely different so and um, other things happened too um there was the big thing for me was that 
but this is crazy, but I didn't realize that he had a girlfriend already and he hadn't told her about me, vice versa, and that she was actually pregnant um, and I didn't realize. And so I broke up with him and he ended up going back to her. I think they broke up eventually down the, down the road because he cheated on her again, but that was a huge thing for me um, to learn. So here I was in England by myself. I had a job. <laughs> And no one didn't know anybody, no friends, um, only people that I knew in work. Um, and so I ended up moving back temporarily to my my friends, my mutual friends of me and my mum's. And it was kind of an emotional roller coaster. I was so down. I was crying constantly. I said, OK, off men. That's it. Off men. And so kind of just, you know, ended up meeting friends through work and things like that. And so I go out, have coffees, very much kind of just trying to get myself back together because that really was a shock. Nothing like that had ever happened to me. You know, I'd, I think I'd had two serious relationships before that back in Ireland. And here I was, as I said, in a different country, you know, no family around me. Um, all I had for, in terms of friends was that kind of communication and work with people. So that was a huge thing. So yes, I think getting over the fact that he had, he was my first relationship in England, um, and that would have been 2010, um, and he kind of really did. It was a huge hurt, um, because I'd see him then in coffee shops and things, and we'd have to pass by because we lived in the same area. He eventually moved out of the area, um, but yes, um, it, guys, sorry, my memory ran out there, so I had to do um, some removing of pictures, etc. But yes, that was a huge shock, shock um, I think. That really kind of um, <clears throat> rattled my trust in men and I cried a lot and I felt um, very alone because I was, even though um, I had my friends, I was in a different country by myself. Um, and so I eventually moved out of my friends, mutual friends, um, house and, <clears throat> excuse me, I stayed in Somerset for a while. Um, and so I was off men for a very long time. I would let you just work and come home. And eventually I went online um, and I'd never gone online before, ever ever, 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 and I went on Plenty of Fish, and I was on there, but would never say anything to anyone, never messaged anyone, and then I just came across this profile one day, and um, I don't want to say names, because, well, I came across this person's profile, um, well, I think you probably know, I've mentioned it before, Kevin's profile, um, and he was um, living in Oxford, and I was in Somerset, so... We messaged back for a long time, phone calls, everything like that, and um, I was I was living in Somerset but working in Bath, and so the next year, 2011 came around, it was my birthday, around an April time, and we'd spoken for a long time, and so I think I wanted to do that, ironically, because I didn't want to jump into anything um, too serious too soon, so when we did meet, we met in Bath, and I had just finished work, I was working in Gradwell at the time, um, and we met after work um, and he came down from Oxford on the train and we just hit it off really, really quickly. Really similar interests, really similar kind of backgrounds with family and things like that. Not exactly the same, but we'd certainly known loss in terms of parents in different ways. Um, so um, we really did hit it off quite quickly. Um, so we, we dated for a couple of months um, and then he and then just happened that where I was working, um, they were then closing certain offices and they were keeping the um, long-term permanent staff and they were letting go temporary and obviously I hadn't been there very long um, so I um, was then um, kind of thinking what do I do um, I found that job in Gradwell as I said in Bath um, and I decided um, well we mutually decided it was a really comfortable way of doing it it wasn't rushed like my previous relationship it wasn't like oh my god this whirlwind and I think I'd done that on purpose because I didn't want to be hurt again you know and I'm sure he was the same so um, he'd had experiences as well and um, so we decided I decided to move to Oxford um, and I, I kind of one weekend I got everything on the train and we, you know, I, I just waited at the train station with my bags and ready to go. Um, and so I arrived in Oxford and we stayed at his flat for a long time before we got ourselves um, a place. And in the meantime, I obviously, my mum had been minding Ruffles, which is my dog, which I'd had for three months. Um, for Sorry, for, for its entire life. And, and we bought it when it was three months old. It was a rescue, actually, not a... You can see that I haven't had coffee today. <laughs> um but I have things to do, but I was requested to do this and I really wanted to, um, because obviously you guys don't know the history of why I'm here. So, um, so yes, I got on the train, as I said, and we lived together for a couple of months and then 
because I was so settled, um, I had left Ruffles with my mum, which was my dog, um, and she would have been three or four at the time. Um, and so I said to mum that I'd take Ruffles. And so we, myself and Kevin went back on the ferry, got Ruffles, came back again, and she stayed with us. Um, and we ended up getting married in 2013. Um, and then we, um, we'd we moved around kind of different houses in Oxford, um, but we always had issues, I think, um, with different family members, with my family members, things were just never, there was a certain family member of mine that needed kind of constant looking, looking after. And I think both ways, it just, it started to eat into the relationship. And then we fought a lot. Um, and it just got really, really kind of to the point where I wanted to save it. Um, but I wasn't sure he did. Um, and I think we both just needed a fresh break. So we ended up so that was 2014 where we decided let's move to Ireland maybe maybe we need a change so we had everything ready to go I moved over first he was going to give his leave and um, he had a bit more leave you know to to tell work so he had to stay um at this point unfortunately Ruffles had passed away so it was a huge emotional roller coaster that year and um, so I ended up moving back waiting for him to come obviously and so I moved back in 2015 um, and then we just got more distant and more distant um, and little fights here and there were turning into big things that wouldn't have been big if we had been living together. But because of the distance and everything, I think anger was building up, things like that, things that wouldn't have happened if we lived together. And unfortunately, it just it just broke down completely due to other things as well. Um, but, you know, we were we were fighting a lot Um and we ended up separating um, and I stayed with my mum for a few months. Um, again, I was trying to find work, trying to find something to focus on. I always try to find something to focus on. That was a really, really bad time for me because a lot of my things were still there because I hadn't, I hadn't um, seen this coming really at all. I hadn't seen the want for separation. I hadn't seen any of that coming. Um, so it really hit me hard. So I had to then go to Dublin airport um, I whichever way the flight worked I couldn't get a um, a day flight so I had to sleep over at Dublin airport which was the weirdest experience of my life got my kind of my handbag my, my luggage um, my ticket and um, the, the flight was I think 6 a.m and um, because I was coming from Wexford and um, the morning the morning um, buses to get to to Dublin airport from Wexford started at 7 a.m so I had to get the 9 p.m. previous nights bus down to uh, uh, down to Dublin and stay overnight to get my flight. So that in itself was <laughs> was just awful, you know, sitting there, you know, at my age that I was, um, and just going over and getting my things um, and coming home. And it's something that I never expected to do. I think my emotions were everywhere. I even remember the flight was just. I can't even remember it to be honest. I think I was in a different world. I got to Oxford, or no, sorry, I got to Gatwick and got the train. Um, the bus even to the coach to Oxford and then Kevin I think didn't meet me there I think as far as I remember I, I made my way I think he actually did sorry he met me there and it was the most awkward weekend of my life it really was because I came back to somebody almost to a stranger and when I went away I think I thought we had a plan and when I came back to a stranger and things were boxed you know there was boxes ready it was just the weirdest time I'd ever had in my life at that point at least um just such a strange time he was kind of very much ahead in terms of emotion he was handling it a lot better he was kind of will we get a takeout will we get a pizza and I was kind of totally shocked um he just seemed to emotionally get over it very very a lot quicker than I did um well, maybe, and maybe he was kind of you know more inclined thinking that way and I had no idea and I was trying to make it work so I had to then bring all my stuff that I could, that could physically come back with me, that could be checked in, um, in which was clothes, little bits and pieces, photo frames, just a lot of my clothes and things that I needed basically. And things like um, furniture in the house were sent over after that. But to be honest, I didn't want it. I just wanted little essential things that I needed. So things like that were sent over to me and that was it. That was literally it. And then the last time, he emailed was just the attachment to the separation papers so everything for me happened so so fast but that weekend showed me that obviously this was a good thing because my emotions were if I can 
if I can savor this, if I can save anything, I will. I'll come back here. I'll live anywhere with him. I'll do what it needs. I'll do what needs to be done. Because when I got married, I didn't didn't take it for granted. I didn't go and get married and then expect, you know, everything to be perfect. I wanted to work on things. And I think what I mean is I wouldn't have married, gotten married had I known it was just going to kind of fall apart like that. So yeah, he was very much ahead of me in terms of emotions and feeling more moving ahead. So I think if I'd known that, like I said, I wouldn't have got married. Um, but we were together essentially from, you know, 2011 to 2000, and I suppose, 15, because we, we broke up in 2015. So um, he then kind of moved on with his life. He, st he rented that house, I think, a little bit longer and then moved out. So that was the house we'd lived in. Um, and I was back with my mum, <laughs> all of a sudden, back with my mum permanently, um, not knowing what to do, not having a job. So things were just really stressful. Um, and so um, it just got really, really, um, really tough. So I moved home, as I said. Um, I met, um, again, I thought, sillily, I thought I'd go online again. Um, and I'd gotten this part-time job in a Montessori, so I was only a relief staff, so I wasn't there every day. So I was writing, doing other things um, in between, and one of my friends suggested, just go online, you don't have to go into anything serious, just, you know, try to, you know, try to just get yourself out there. So I did, I went online, I can't even remember now the website. And yes, I, I met this one person, so not loads, just one person that I seemed to link with. Um, and we, um, we dated for a few a few months, but I'd gotten a job in Dublin. In the meantime, before that, I'd actually applied for a job um, as a teacher in Dublin and I'd gotten the job. So I rented a room um, with, from this lovely lady um, and she did rent rooms. It was a really nice house, so I rented a room there because it was walking distance to my new job. And we had a really, really good relationship. We had the same interests. He, you know, he was actually from the UK and he was living in Ireland. So it was really odd. It was kind of vice versa. Um, and he, um, you know, said, I just, I miss you because he lived in Clare and I lived in Dublin, two, two different counties altogether. So um, we did, we end, I ended up um, moving in. But again, it wasn't anything that we'd rushed into. It was, you know, so we were together, I think then it was 20... 15 um, and then 2016 um, the October 2016 he asked me to move in and so I did and then um, the no sorry the October 2015 he asked me to move in and I did and then the next year um, he got a package from work he decided to leave but he was he actually was entitled to quite a big package um, in terms of finance and so he decided I've never met your dad I've never been to America so let's go so we did we went to America, we traveled, we saw, he saw my dad, he met my brother, um, everyone was getting on really well. Um, and I just couldn't believe I'd found this amazing person. I was so happy, so, so happy. I'd started to finally realize maybe this was why um, everything didn't work out with Kevin. I was the happiest I think I've ever been in my life. And then he surprised me and said, actually, I've, I've booked three days in New York. So we went to New York. I'd never been there. We visited the Twin Towers. We went to Times Square. We did, you know, we did everything. It was amazing. And um, then we came home and um, I started a job there, which was really good. I'd applied and gotten a part time job as a special needs teacher. So everything was falling into place. Um, and yeah, we, we got Izzy and Millie, which you probably see um, in my previous, so he knew that I, Ruffles had died and for my birthday, he got me Millie, who was a Westie and Izzy, who was a Westie mix. Izzy was her little girl. So we, we, we were told that they can't be home separately, that they had a really good bond. So um, we honed them, we, we, we got them both and we were having such a good time. I was working, he was building his own business at home. He wanted to build an online clothing business online. So I was helping him everything. And then one of the mornings, I think, um, I, my phone was dead and I knew I had to, I was late for work. So I wanted to call my boss and let her know. Am I, and he said, yeah, I use my phone. So I used his phone and I was just on the phone to her and there was all these pings coming up on the phone. And when I looked at the pings, one of the pings was from somebody and they were sexting each other. And yeah, so <laughs> the really hard part was though, is that we had four months left on our, you know, I think our lease. He told me in the meantime that his landlord wanted to come back. The, la the house we had, the landlord te taught in Spain and then he decided he wanted to come back and live in his house. So then I was kind of thinking, okay, we, 
we're not together, we're living in the house, I need to find somewhere to go. And I was looking through my qualifications one day and they were all, all apart from my Montessori, they were all gotten. So in between my relationships in the UK, I'd been studying for further um, education and everything was UK based. So I knew the, the probability of me getting a better job would be to go back to the UK. Which is what I did. And because he was from the UK, he we went together. So we went on the ferry together and we were split. I mean, it was a really awkward time. We did get along to a point and I just kind of came to terms with, I don't know why this has happened. And he obviously felt when we came home from America, I don't know, something changed. I don't know what it was. But um, he first of all, after we came home from America, he was really focusing on the business, really focusing on work. And then things started to dwindle um, a little bit. And through, you know, I don't, there's nothing that I really, um, I don't ever wish bad on him, but it was a really weird way considering my history with my divorce and everything. It's not how I wanted things to go at all. And I think even when we went to the UK, I still hoped things would, would work and they didn't. Um, he went to Gloucestershire. I went to Oxford, back to Oxford, because I knew the area, I knew the jobs. Um, I knew kind of, I'd been researching and I'd found a house and this kind of goes into Izzy and Millie um, and not being able to keep them. So when I found a house online, I was obviously back in Ireland and I had to have a house to go to because I already had a job. So I was looking at these pictures from an online perspective. Um, and so I really wanted to make sure that they had a garden and everything like that because I planned to keep them. I was never going to, you know, I'm a, I'm a huge animal person, animal lover. Um, and I went to um, the house. One, so we were dropped off at the house by of my ex um and you know he stayed and helped with the furniture so we weren't kind of not on really terrible terms but it was very hurtful at the same time so we went in and my furniture wasn't really there yet there was a couple of things there so we went and got stuff that i needed we went and got kettles we went and had a wine that night um and um basically when i saw the garden as i walked in it was so small and i knew already they're not going to be comfortable here. I can just tell, you know, so as when he left and I started to work at Energy Kids, as you know, I've st I'm still there to this day. Um, the nature of the of the job is that it's after school. So I'm not there in the afternoon, but I'm there with them in the morning. And so my neighbor told me the first week they are screaming when you're not here. They're crying and crying and crying. I can hear them just really upset. And so what I did first is I didn't want to give them away. So I got a, beha a dog behavior um, they they're in Oxford but they come and they train them and they come and help you deal with different situations and she said what's the situation I said they're just they're so lonely when I go and even when I let them outside the garden isn't big enough there's two even when I bring them for two walks a day before work they're still upset when I leave and so we did for a month I tried with the behavioral therapist and um, and they weren't coping they were, my neighbor said they're still they're still crying when you're not there and it was the hardest decision, but um, I went to the Oxford Animal Sanctuary, who were a really good sanctuary, um, and I kind of worked with them to get them a new family, um, who were there full time, um, and I made sure they were adopted together, and I made sure their names stayed, Izzy and Millie, because they were, at a certain point in a dog's life, they recognised that name, and so they, an, an amazing couple adopted them, but that was pretty hard. Um, and so then I stayed in, in Killington for a while, um, and there was kind of, I wouldn't say a relationship, but there was kind of, maybe I'd gotten too close to somebody and it was, it kind of got, I knew that, you know, it wasn't going to go anywhere. Um, and I didn't want to make any more mistakes. <laughs> I really didn't. And so we were more friends than anything else, I think. Um, and they had um, other family commitments. And it just, in the end, it, it, before it got to kind of, where I'd been before, um, I kind of learned and I, I didn't really, um, I didn't take it too far because I'd learned, you know, and, and I was getting hurt already and I didn't want to get hurt. So I was already starting to feel emotionally attached and it was a wrong, it was the wrong thing to do. Um, so I was living by myself in Killington, but everything in Killington was just, it wasn't feeling, at that time I just needed a fresh start and I moved to Steve Laston. Um, and I felt kind of a little bit more at ease there for a while. It was the countryside, you know. Um, so for a year, as you know, I lived in Steeple Aston and I've been back in Kidlington and here I am. Um, and it's been a whirlwind. It really has been a whirlwind. And throughout all of that, I've seen friends get married, have children, you know, all these different things. And you're here and, you, you know, for, you know, I thought for all important, all important 
purposes that I would be still married and have children and that was always my hope but it hasn't worked out that way um, so that is how I got to Oxford um, and I, I do as you guys know I've spoken about it before I want children I want a family but I've come to the terms now if it was meant to be it's meant to be and if it's, if it's going to happen it will happen and if it doesn't it doesn't and you know I can't make things um, happen and that's what I don't want to do I don't want to force something just to have something else so I have learned a lot I have really learned a lot but there are regrets there are certain regrets I wouldn't have moved to Oxford had I known that the marriage wouldn't work out I wouldn't have moved to Ireland back to the UK had I known I'd have to give up Izzy and Millie like there's so many things I'm sure everybody when they look back um has to do um so that was really in a fast a very fast um fast-paced um, conversation is how I got here but um, and you know what I'm reflecting on now is um, how that must have made my mum feel you know she raised me by herself and that's something that upsets me and that I want to work on is that I never thought from my mum's perspective having raised me and then I go to England that you know and it was just me and her for so long even though I went you know for a relationship and that was quite a normal thing for somebody in their 20s to do I never thought emotionally how that would affect her um, because we were each other's lives, me and my granny and my mum, and my granny had passed in 2005, seven, sorry, 2007, and so it was me and her for, you know, a couple of years, and then, you know, and then I left, um, and I never thought the emotion, emotional anguish and um, upset that must have caused her, um, and now, you know, as I'm getting older, um, I make such an effort with her, I always call her every day, because if I put myself in her position, if I raised a little girl, and then, you know, she travelled and I had to stay in Oxford and only saw her four times of the year. And obviously this year it's huge because she hasn't seen me at all. Um, and we were speaking this morning, wondering if Christmas is going to happen. Um, so I never thought of it from other people's emotions point of view, and particularly my mum. Obviously my dad, we talked now and then. I'm actually, can I can, I'm at the point now in my life where I think I talk, talked about him in my mental health video that now I real and even then I've moved on a little bit emotionally since I recorded that because what I, I just feel like you can be angry but he's still going to live his life he's still going to be close to your brother he's still going to he may have a conversation with you and even if it's about what you're talking about in five minutes he'll be moving on to something else and so as angry as that makes me it just makes me want to kind of move on myself so the one person in the world, if I was to choose, and I, would, I don't ever want people to choose parents, but never do. Please don't take this as something to do. This is just my personal feelings. Um, I, my mum, it would be my mum because she's been through so much and I never thought of it from her side. Um, just me gone. The silence of the house must have been crazy, you know, not having me running in and out, Ruffles running in and out. Um, it must have been really, really difficult. And so now I make a huge effort because that must have been an emotional roller coaster for her. Um, and if I had a daughter and that happened, I think my heart would break. So it's funny how you only look back now um, and you see the emotional destruction you've done to yourself, but also the possible emotional destruction you've done to family. Um, and I know I had to move and I had to get a job and things like that. And, you know, um, but I, I do feel like I, I need to make and I, and I have for so long. And I mean, before COVID, I would go home six times a year. Christmases would always be spent together. And yeah, so um, I am learning a lot. I'm learning a lot. And when you look back, you do feel that you need to better yourself. And I do feel like I need to better myself. Like I... I am writing the sequel and, and I have I have got a publisher and but I think um to, to an ocean of secrets is what I mean but again my focus needs to be there I need to start to focus on things you know I've jumped on the juice plus um kind of team because they are pure health that's why I've done it because I don't want to join something that's a fad you know the vitamins work for me I was customer since 2018 so it's not something I've done off the cuff kind of thing but for me I'm trying to get my health better so that my mental health can be better. And especially in these times, all of us, no matter where we come from, if we come from a, a blended family, if we come from a, where we're just on our own our entire lives, you know, um, any situation you come from, the COVID is hitting everybody the exact same way. 
you could be a millionaire and you're still in your house, you can't do anything about it. So you could win the lottery and you're still here and you can't do anything about it. So what I mean is, is that it is, that's something that's going to affect our mental health anyway. So why not try to improve what you can and control what you can really? So that was kind of my um, story. Um, it was a lot, of an emo a lot of emotions, a lot of crying, a lot of tears over relationships, um, a lot of um, stupidness on my part, I think. I call it stupidness, but I've spoken to my friends about it and they think it's because I haven't had, I've had such, I haven't had that mail and I have, I've had these conversations and we've had wine and the girls have come over and um, I've said to them, like, is it me? And they said, well, look, you didn't, you grew up in a female based house, which was amazing. You have these amazing role models in your family, but you just never had that man in your life that wasn't going to as a child uh, and as a teenager when you really need your dad you know you didn't have that so you were just basing things off your own young mind and so I'm glad they said that to me because I felt so guilty for so long like should I not have seen things before they happened I mean should I not have seen the fact that possibly we shouldn't have gotten married um possibly you know we weren't completely compatible but nobody knows that at the start so yes so I am I'm moving on I'm I'm trying to better myself but yes I won't go on too long because this is another long video um but hopefully you guys get to see the full thing um I hope everyone is really safe and well I know we're in our second lockdown now so um I'm really trying to get healthy with these um I'm trying to um I've got my shake that I've just finished um and it just, you know, um, try and just better myself, really. But do not forget um, the the two um, items that are up for grabs. It's just the cleanser, which is the dual phase oil and water. And then the juniper um, and bulk and body wash. And what I will do is I will actually look up the scent and the ingredients and see what it is. But just when it hits you guys, there's a very it's just menthol-y, um, it just wouldn't be my kind of thing. But it's absolutely, it's called spa. Spa of the World, Body Shop, and um, Juniper and Balkan Body Wash. So yes, and then the Vitamin E Skincare Cleanser. So if you just want one, let me know. The first email I get, guys, I'll just, I'll, I'll send it off. Because otherwise that's the fairest thing to do, really, isn't it? Um, so yes, they're up for grabs. Do let me know your full address. And obviously, if it's international, do give those details as well. Thank you for looking at the video. I know it was a long one. I hope you enjoyed it. And everybody stay safe.